Hi, my name is Sam Dhanishekaran and welcome to this Database Lessons video series. In this video, we will talk about managing an Oracle instance. Actually, we have already talked about a couple of things in the previous videos. Uh, we've already talked about uh, creating a database and uh, starting up and shutting down a database. We also talked about uh, parameter files, SP file and P file. And in this lesson, we will talk about background process. Okay. So what are background processes? Okay. So, when Oracle starts up, when the Oracle instance runs, it has some processes running in the background. And those processes are needed for it to function properly. Okay, So, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what those processes are. Okay. First one, database writer. Okay, referred as DBW N. N means a number, like the number one, two, three. Uh, there could be multiple processes in database writer. DBW one, two, three. Uh, I believe it can go up to thirty-two processes. <coughs> okay, so what does this do? This database writer process it writes the data which is in the memory to the data files in the disk okay so when I say data uh, you must have from the earlier uh, videos you must have seen system global area that's the main part of the memory uh, where data will be there and it gets modified so the modified data needs to be written to the data files at some point or some point right so the process that makes that possible is database writer process okay so it modif it writes the modified data in the memory to the data files okay so the next one is log writer process We've already seen that. Actually, we haven't seen. So I will explain this uh, now. Okay. So when a change happens in the memory, right? And uh, Oracle, what it does is it makes a note of that change and writes it quickly to a type of file called readlog file. Why? Because even when you commit a data, meaning that you change some data, right? And then when you issue commit, meaning that, okay, I'm done with that, save this data, right? Even when a user issues a commit, Oracle doesn't transfer the modified data to the data files immediately okay it still keeps it there okay that's the way oracle works okay but however the changes what it's going to change and what it has changed those things are recorded in read lock files okay and that would be written in Redolog. The changes uh, would be copied to this Redolog files. Redolog files are kind of like uh, uh, files with less overhead in the sense like now things can be written sequentially. Okay. The reason Redolog files are needed is when somebody commits some data and data is still there in the memory not written to the data files and then the system crashes right uh, when the system crashes then uh, it would check the read lock file and there your transaction would be written 
as some kind of a rough draft like a quick scribble right but then it knows okay this modification uh, has been committed so then it will go and apply this modify this these modifications to the data files so that's why it's called redo okay um, so a log writer I'll, I'll, I'll come to the redo log later uh, but uh, just uh, remember this I mean just understand you don't need to remember like I say okay just understand okay so the log writer process is responsible for moving the redo log entries from the memory to the redo log files okay so the next one is checkpoint process what it does is it triggers at a certain interval when I say interval uh, it doesn't depend on just the time alone there are a couple of other factors that can be configured and when that factors meet or I would say when that thresholds uh, 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 gets evaluated to be true then the checkpoint occurs and it triggers all the modified data in the memory to be returned to the data file whether it's committed or not it will be written okay just remember the sentence whether it's committed or not it will be written okay I'll come to that later because the concept of undo will is based on that sentence which I just said okay in a quick uh, note uh, you know a data that is not committed can also be written to the data file but you know if the system crashes then <coughs> they will be cleaned up undone something like that so the next process is smon process which is system monitor process if you talk to oracle dbs most of the dbs like now if you just tell them smon then they would understand some might not even recognize system monitor if someone says like what is a system monitor process they, they would not even recognize that because this i would say this word smon is used as a word in oracle so uh, smon is a system monitor process which basically monitors the system and it's it's important for the instance recovery during a restart of a failed instance okay so like i explained here you know uh, a failure could happen at any time whether uh, data has been written to the memory but not to the data files but it's there in the redo or whether the data has been written to the data file but not committed okay so in that case what happens is when a database uh, when an instance starts um, this process is responsible in checking the consistency of the database by uh, undoing the uh, transaction that are incomplete and by redoing the transactions which are complete but not stored in the data file data files so this will make sure all the data files are are, are in a consistent mode at a given point of time and then only it will allow allow the database to be opened okay the next one is process monitor this monitors the database while it's running and when I say monitor it actually monitors the user processes which is when you have a database and there are many connections coming from your network to the database we can call them as user processes okay sometimes a user uh, you know uh, you know from from his or her computer make a connection and then without logging out they would just shut down their computer and go so who's to keep track of this session right here this guy is gone so that's being done by this pmon process it just keeps monitoring it and if the connection is gone right then it will decide ah, okay the the uh, have done uh, a transaction but it's incomplete so this will help in 
<coughs> rolling back the transaction okay and uh, uh, you know so this basically monitors the user processes and uh, it will also clean up the <coughs> the program global area occupied by this session okay so pmon process which is uh, process monitor it monitors the user process and just remember the words I said rolling back okay the reason is uh, I think up until <coughs> Oracle 9 uh, Oracle had rollback segments and then later they started calling it as undo okay both are kind of synonymous and then archiver process this makes a copy of the redo log files and stores in the location that has been specified okay I'll explain why that is needed this is needed for um, instance or database I'm sorry this is needed for uh, database recovery if there is a failure okay I'll explain those things later but just understand this and then uh, there is this uh, relatively new process called <coughs> mmon process which is used for monitoring the database and uh, oracle database comes with a uh, set of thresholds that we can configure internally and if those thresholds are exceeded or violated then database would generate alerts um, it's also responsible for taking snapshots of the database conditions which are used for performance troubleshooting etc <coughs> and the this process its job queue process uh, it's responsible for running uh, scheduled user jobs so meaning that uh, certain jobs can be scheduled to run at certain time period uh, and that is monitored and administered by this process okay so these are the background processes so database writer which basically moves the modified data from memory to the data files log writer it does the same thing but just for the read log entries checkpoint at uh, at a given interval uh, this makes everything every modified data from memory to flush out uh, to the data files and then uh, smon process which is important for the recovery uh, during each and every time when the database starts <coughs> uh, after failure actually I would say like now SMON would do the checkup uh, even if there is no failure it will just basically make sure this is important uh, in making sure the database is consistent when it starts and then it allows it to open okay and then process monitor it monitors the user process archiver it makes a copy of redo log that's used for uh, uh, backup uh, restore of the database and manageability monitor this uh, is uh, used for issuing alerts and everything basically monitoring the uh, the metrics of database and uh, job queue process this is responsible for the, this is the scheduler process basically I would say so using this uh, we can schedule the jobs Thank you for watching.